All right, today in this video, we're gonna be growing hydroponic watermelons indoors under these two Mars Hydro SP3000 lights. And we're gonna be growing a petite yellow variety. That's the seedling right there. Uh, don't let that name fool you though. This seed actually came from a melon I grew in my garden about a year ago. And that was actually a 30 pound melon. So this is a regular sized melon variety. It's nothing small like a sugar baby or anything like that. I have grown sugar babies indoors before, and I'll go ahead and link a video for that up here. But the mainly this video here is not a side-by-side -side comparison like I would normally do. Uh, we're basically just testing out to see if these lights here can grow a regular sized watermelon. And the reason why I was enticed to do this is because I had a very terrible year growing melons outside in my own garden this year. I, it's just, it was very bad. And it's my first time ever I've actually failed at growing watermelons. And I'm gonna do it indoors to make up for it, hopefully uh, approaching the winter here actually. So basically just got a, a tub here full of a nutrient solution. There's eight gallons in there. Uh, I use a powder nutrient. Um, I'll go ahead and link a video talking about that up there as well. And I actually just got it wrapped here in black plastic bags and that's just because the container itself is gray and a little bit of uh, visible light gets through there and I don't really want that. Um, you can see I'm aerating the solution. This is kind of like a DWC Kratky hybrid. It's normally what I do anyways. Uh, I will be covering this up. I just left it open to show you there. So we're gonna go ahead and get along with this experiment and we'll make updates as we go along here. All right, just a quick update here. It has been almost exactly one month since the first part of this video. And I wanted to talk about something that happened here. Now, this looks pretty bad and I'm gonna explain why here. So what happened was is I never changed out the solution in here. And normally what I do is I'll change out the solution when it starts to lower when it starts when the plants start to consume most of the uh, fluid inside there now let's take a look see that that doesn't look much less than what it was when it first started and this plant here actually was looking pretty healthy and then all of a sudden very very quickly the leaves started to look really bad turn brown and started to basically just turn to a crisp kind of like that one there i've since cut pretty much all those off and I know this plant looks sad, as I mentioned already, but you see this is all new growth starting here. So what actually happened was, is this plant, even though it wasn't very big at all, it actually consumed most of the nitrogen that was in that solution. You know, it, I mean, it didn't really consume a lot of water, but it consumed most of the nitrogen that was in there. So all I really did uh, is I just basically re-added some more nutrients to it, and now it's coming back to life. And I am gonna change out the solution very soon here, but I just wanted to show that just so that nobody else makes the same mistake. Um, I didn't wanna change out the solution that soon because there was barely any of it used. So I didn't really wanna waste it. And in most cases with all these other plants I've grown in the past, it's never really been a problem at all. Uh, but this here, this watermelon, it just sucked up that nitrogen like crazy. So I'm gonna make sure I fix that problem going forward. Okay, it has been two weeks since my last update to this video and check out all this new growth. Look at this. In just two weeks, the plant has recovered pretty well and it's continuing to grow really well. I've even got some new flowers starting down there, which I'm getting pretty excited about that. Hoping to get some, you know, at least basketball size watermelons. I'm not expecting it to be like a full size, you know, a 30 pound melon like you get outside. Um, we'll see, but if I get a basketball size one or so, I'll be happy with that. Because this is the first time I'm growing, you know, full size regular watermelons in the house. And I would have never been able to do this 15 years ago. These type of lights did not exist that long ago uh, to this scale and with this efficiency. You know, that I would have been using a couple different metal halide bulbs if I was gonna try to attempt even growing watermelons indoors. So this has made it possible, these lights here. So this is what the roots look like here. How well you can see them, but it's kind of weird. There's like, there's basically like one main root kind of cycling around here and there's a bunch of uh, fibers branching off of that. It's a little bit different than a lot of other plants I've grown. So we're gonna let this go for a little bit and we'll come back and uh, see what happens. All right, we're at some time later now. I don't even know when the last uh, segment of this video was, but it's been a little while, not too long, but you can see here we got some additional growth going on. It's getting nice and dense. Uh, lots of flowers growing on here. And I've actually also increased the intensity of these lights. Uh, it's sitting about right here. So roughly 75% of the full output, which is more than enough. Um, I can't put it up any farther because what I've done is I've actually made the center of that around 900 micromole. I don't want to go up any higher than that. And around the edges are actually uh, actually pretty similar to that. So it's not too far off, maybe 800 or so uh, around the edges, even though it's a little bit lower. Uh, just as 
how efficient these lights are, especially with the way they kind of spread the light out since there's two of them. Uh, anyone asking what I'm doing here as far as uh, exhaust, uh, there's a fan in the corner there. Uh, that's just to basically just push the air kind of upwards and circle it in the tent. And then I also have an exhaust uh, system up here. There's a six inch exhaust duct and that goes to my uh, AC Infinity fan, which is at just setting one, the lowest setting. And that's keeping the temperature in here at 82 degrees, which is taken out with that probe right over there. So right down at this point. And usually when I open up this tent, I can feel that it's nice and warm and slightly humid. Uh, I mean, not very humid, but more humid than the air in my house. And uh, that's pretty much the optimal uh, conditions for growing the watermelon. So what I'm going to do now is there's actually some female flowers growing. Uh, I saw a couple on the floor over there and I'm going to pollinate them with the male flower. Here is the female flower right here. And so you got a little melon start in there and that needs to be pollinated for that to grow. So I'm gonna take uh, a male flower, which is right over here. Here's a male flower. Um, that's how you know it's a male because there's no uh, little melon start in there. There's actually a little melon start right there too. But I'm gonna take the one that's over here on the floor and uh, you know this flower is open so it's ready. So I'm gonna pull the male flower off of that and then just touch it to that and it'll be pollinated. And this is, this is actually only one plant. So yeah, this is all one plant here, this whole thing. So I'm only going to attempt to grow one melon. Uh, I, I think one melon is going to be more than enough in this uh, small space with one plant, you know, in a, in a small tub like this. Cover that up there. All right, it's been 10 days since my last video update where I pollinated the flower, or the melon, I should say. There hasn't been a whole lot additional growth since then. Um, plant's still looking pretty good. What there has been a lot of is a lot more flowers growing. And the plant right now is pr uh, putting a lot of its energy into flowers. Uh, and basically watermelon buds, if you want to call them that. Uh, so you can see the node spacing on these vines is really tight. Um, uh, lots of uh, dense flowers uh, towards the tips of the vines here, which is a lot more than I would normally see outside. The, the node spacing is tighter and there's more flowers, or, or so it appears so. Uh, I, think the, I think it looks like there's more flowers just because they're closer together. To where outside it seems like they'd be more spaced apart. So. It's looking pretty healthy, except for right there in the middle, there was some nutrient deficiency starting. Uh, it was getting low on nitrogen. Uh, recently, about a week ago, I actually did a full uh, nutrient change out in this tub here. I basically just sucked uh, all the stuff out and put a, four gallons of fresh stuff back in. I wanted to show you here, we, it looks like we do have pollination. If I get over here, it's kind of hard. That melon right there is getting larger. And that tells me that we did achieve pollination on that one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut the vine off right after where that melon is growing. And that's gonna allow it to put uh, more energy into the melon itself. So we'll go ahead and clip it right there. And then now we have a end there where all the energy should go right into that melon, hopefully. All right, it has only been two days since the last update to this video, and I wanted to talk about two things real quick. Uh, one, there is some deficiency starting again with this watermelon plant. Um, seems like maybe nitrogen and some iron or just a combination of things. And I'm gonna be addressing this with a nutrient change out, but it seems like with watermelon plants or anything that's a melon or cucumbers growing indoors in hydroponics, they're very susceptible to deficiencies and things go downhill very, very quickly with these types of plants. Certainly a lot more challenging than with any other type of plant that I've grown indoors hydroponically. So mainly what I wanted to show here was the watermelon. So two days ago, that was the size of a grape, and now it looks like the size of a kiwi. So if you don't look closer, you can see it closer. There you go, it's the size of a kiwi. I mean, that's pretty good growth for growing something indoors. Uh, I mean, I've, I've seen that I've seen melons grow that quickly outdoors, so it's doing pretty well. And I'm, I'm definitely gonna make sure I fix this issue with the deficiencies in this plant so I can keep that going. I definitely don't wanna ruin the experiment at this point. I've got a lot invested, a lot of time invested anyways. So that's it for this update, and we'll come back in a little while. All right, it has been just a little over one month exactly, and here is the progress so far. So the overall look of this entire plant is normal. It's uh, nearing the end of its life. Uh, a lot of leaves are dying and new leaves are coming back, but 
Here's where we are with the melon. Take a look at that. That is the size of a volleyball, a little, or a little bit bigger than a volleyball right now. Now, I'm not sure if it's ready to pick yet. Uh, when I thump on it, when I knock on it, you know, like that, it uh, doesn't really have that thumping sound that I want to hear yet. It's kind of hard to describe. But mainly what I'm going off of right now is the underside of it. Uh, it's, a, it's getting to be a nice dark yellow color on the bottom side of it. But that doesn't mean that it's necessarily ripe yet. Uh, it looks like it might be getting there. But this is different because we're growing this indoors and I think it may not be ripe. Because if I look over there, let me get a little closer here. You see that little yellow leaf right there? That little yellow leaf? That's called the spoon leaf. And then next to that, on the other side of it, is a tendril. And those are both not brown yet. Although the spoon leaf is yellow, and it should be green, you know, but it, it's yellow, so it's transitioning to brown. And that's about when I want to actually pick this, is when that's brown and the tendril's brown and dried up. Because that's a, a definite thing, that is a definite indicator to let you know that it's actually ripe. The last thing I want to do is pick this before it's ready. And I only got one. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this so far. I gotta say though, so check this out in here. Um, the <laughs> the amount of work that's gone into this so far is pretty exhausting. I wouldn't say that it's really a difficult, but I've been having to actually add uh, about a, it's been going through about a gallon and a half of water a day. Now, obviously, that's not from the melon. Obviously, that's because there's a ton of foliage here, and this is just transpiring like crazy. So. You know, there's, that's why air circulation is so important in the tent. That's why I got this little fan going down here, and obviously a ventilation to draw air out of the tent, fresh air in, um, all the typical stuff with the grow tent. But anyways, yeah, that's been going through a lot of water, which also means it's having been going through a lot of nutrients as well. I'll talk about the cost of the nutrients and the, and the uh, energy at the end of this video as well. But um, that's where we are with the progress. So the next update is gonna be picking this thing and uh, hopefully tasting it if it's ripened. All right, today is a very exciting day because it has been almost exactly three weeks since the last segment of this video. And then today we're gonna to be picking that melon there. But before we do that, I wanna talk about one thing real quick and that's the nutrients I've been using, the Veg Plus Bloom here, these are the powdered nutrients. Uh, I was using the suggested dosage at the beginning, uh, one teaspoon per gallon. When that melon started growing, I increased the dosage to, well, basically double that. And then over the past two weeks, I tapered it off to actually less than one teaspoon per gallon to kind of flush everything. Not really necessary, but I didn't want to put any more growth into the leaves and stuff anyways. It seemed like a waste. So looking at this melon here, now there's not a whole lot of change if you're looking at the spoon leaf. So you see that little spoon leaf right there, the yellow leaf, and then the tendril over there next to it, to the left of it. Uh, they're not really dried up or brown yet, but this has had plenty of time to ripen. The bottom of it is very yellow, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pick it today, and hopefully everything works out pretty well. Okay, so it's time to cut it. Oh, I really hope I'm doing the right thing here. Oh boy, that hurts. <laughs> Let's go weigh it. Yeah, this is about the size of a basketball. That's kind of what I was hoping for. Although the bottom isn't quite as yellow as I was hoping for. It looked more yellow under the lights in the tent. Um, although that's not really too bad of a sign. You can buy a melon from the store and it'd be that color. Uh, the only thing that still concerns me is that the spoon leaf and the tendril wasn't really dried up yet. But let's take a weight of this and see how much it weighs. 19.2 pounds, not bad. Okay, so here is the moment of truth. After all these many months, this is actually this actually took longer than it would normally take to uh, grow outside. I think so, anyways. Yeah, I don't remember when I actually started growing this. To be honest, maybe it was the same amount of time. Now, this was supposed to be a yellow melon, so if it's yellow, that's normal. If it's red, then that would mean that it got cross pollinated outside. Right now, it smells very planty. I don't really smell much watermelon smell. Oh wait, no, I smell a little watermelon. Turn it over this way. Oh, no, it's looking good. Look at this. Oh, that, that does look really good, actually. So we got a very nice thin rind, which is good, so it did have a lot of time to ripen. And actually, if I would have left it longer, it wouldn't have been good because this splitting in here uh, 
Um, this needed to be picked sooner, actually, but this isn't bad. So now we're gonna taste it. So before I taste this melon, I wanted to address something because I know I'm gonna get a lot of uh, comments about it, probably. I've had some comments in the past videos about this, and that is growing, well, pretty much anything indoors, but with watermelon being the exception of how long it actually takes, um, how much energy and lighting it takes and all that stuff, probably asking, is it actually worth it? Well, this whole experiment here was absolutely worth it. It's, it's enjoyable, it's a hobby, and people who have hobbies don't get into the hobby to save money. So obviously it's free, or practically free, to grow anything outside, but as far as it being worth it for me, of course it's worth it. Um, anyways in the hobby would probably say the same thing. Energy efficiency wise, well you saw the title, so you know how much it actually costs to do this, so it's definitely not worth it if you're looking to save money. It's way more expensive than just to put some seeds outside in the garden. But let's, let's test this here. Let's te test this. Let's taste this and see if it's actually any good, I guess, because that's probably the ultimate goal. See if it tastes any different than an outdoor grown uh, watermelon. Well, first of all, it's not cold. I didn't have it in the fridge. Usually melon's better when it's cold. But it's pretty sweet. Um, I don't have any complaints about the taste or the flavor. As far as um, does it taste any different, I, I don't think so. Uh, this being a yellow melon variety or, or an heirloom variety, uh, it does have a slightly different taste than the red melons, but hydroponically grown on artificial lighting, it tastes pretty good. I'm gonna let the um, let the camera person try it. My winter watermelon. I'll just put it in your mouth here. Whoa! Eh. Oh. There you go. Big big chunk of it. Mm. And tell me what you think about that. It's tasty. It's good, and she mm -hmm. approves, and she's a, she's a, a melon connoisseur. <laughs> she's a big critic when it comes to food in general. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. will be, it will be better cold, though. Yeah, Never right, it's, it. uh, melon's always better cold. It, it actually <laughs> makes it taste sweeter, so. Well, that's it for this video. It's already very long. I hope you enjoyed following this process. I'll probably be doing more melon growing stuff indoors in the future. Maybe not that variety, but something. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.